Hi, my name is Mehru Jafar, and this is the book I've written on Lucknow. It's called Love and Life in Lucknow. It's a culmination of my fascination with everything that makes Lucknow such a special city. I have been trying to find out what is so unique, what is so different about Lucknow for decades. So when Niyogi asked me to write a book on Lucknow, I pulled out all the notes I've been scribbling for, for many, many years to weave it all into this story. Uh, today I will read to you a monologue from page 198. The book is uh, about 200 pages long. And the paragraph I will read to you today is one of the last paragraphs in the book. But before I do that, I would like to add that by the time I finished uh, writing this story, I concluded that our life on this planet is so wondrous. It's so beautiful because it's such a potent hot pot of a little bit of everything that is worth living for. Today I'm convinced, absolutely convinced that uh, nothing in life is should, nothing is singular or superior. That there is worth to the tiniest grain of sand on this earth and to the tiniest drop of water. And as far as uh, nature is concerned, in the eyes of nature, there is absolute equality and concern for both the ocean and that little drop of water. It's precisely plurality, diversity and the colorful assembling together of a little bit of this and a little bit of that that makes life so awesome. Writing this book makes me unconditionally accept now and to appreciate the fact that the world would not be so colorful, so beautiful if there was no continuous intermingling and colorful churning of living together of human beings ever since life first blossomed on this beautiful earth. So, uh, this is a monologue I'm going to read to you today by uh, a character in the book who is uh, the conscious keeper of society. She's called Tamboli Begum, so-called because uh, of this charming habit of uh, the citizens of Lucknow to uh, tongue twist um, uh, many a word. For example, uh, many people here in this city call Lucknow or refer to Lucknow as Naklau. So also Tamboli, the word Tamboli is the, the way of saying the name of the city of Istanbul. And because Tamboli Begum has uh, 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 Turkic origins, uh, uh, Turkic ancestors, she is uh, called by fellow citizens of Tamboli Begum. And here in this paragraph, this brief paragraph, she's talking to Banubua, another important character in the story and who is perhaps the Sutradhar because it is Banubua who, who keeps all these chapters and the characters in the book connected to each other. So here, the Banubua has come visiting Tamboli Begum and now uh, after a long lovely chat together uh, it's time for Banubua to leave but before Banubua takes her leave of Tamboli Begum this is what Tamboli Begum has to say to Banubua. Page 198 Take this bag of samosas and share them with all the arrogant people you know. Tell them, the potatoes that make the filling of a samosa so mouth-watering have come from southern Peru and far away Bolivia. Tell them who say the potato is theirs and garlic is ours that most of the ingredients in a samosa are from 
outside the region of South Asia. Those who say that saffron is theirs and green is ours must know that the original cultivation of onions is claimed by several civilizations, including China, Egypt, and Iran. Chilies originally are from Mexico and garlic from Central Asia, China, Siberia, while South Asia introduced ginger and South India taught the world to use turmeric, coriander was once upon a time the main ingredient in all Greek medicines. The yummy crust of the samosa is made from wheat and guess what? Humans first made a delicious meal of the grain around the Mediterranean coast. Salt. Salt is from different parts of the world and is responsible for the rise and fall of many empires worldwide. The art of deep frying food, for example, is a skill learned by the world from the Egyptians. All those who believe in the clash and not in the continuity of cultures, ask them if they are even aware that there would be no samosa without the samsa, a popular snack still eaten, found all over Central Asia. So thank you for listening and I hope I've sparked your interest in my book, which I hope you will pick up, read, and it will make me very, very happy if you tell me what you think. So before taking your leave, next time when you bite into a sizzling hot samosa over a cup of uh, tea perhaps, do remember the story I just told you.